This is the most successful scam show of all time. A hit in 45 countries around the world. The real hustlers have stolen cars. Hi. It's perfectly safe there. Burgled houses. Picked. Switched. And ditched. Antenna for the whole lot. They've carried out close to 500 scams and stolen over £1 million. And now they're back for an 11th series. Alex, Jess, and Paul, with new recruits, Polly and Jazz. Their job, to expose the tricks of the criminal's trade so that you don't get scammed. On tonight's show, guest hustler Laura Hamilton claims she's innocent. That's my wages, that's all the money I've got. You can search me. Polly proves she's tops when it comes to winning prop bets. And that goes in the middle. And this guy has a very expensive lunch. He's been scammed. Marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to see if they can cut it as con artists. But they'll have no clue what the scam is about and there are no dress rehearsals. So this is Sink or Swim. Tonight's guest hustler is TV presenter and Dancing on Ice finalist, Laura Hamilton. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen today. Currently in a park, near a pond. It's pretty wet and windy. I'm completely in an unknown world here, so um, it's a little bit daunting. I'm going to give it my best shot to uh, be a good hustler. I know from watching the programme that I often feel really sorry for the mark and think, oh, that's so cruel. How can the hustlers be doing that to them? So the fact that I'm going to be doing that myself, I'm going to feel really evil. Hello. Hi. Good weather for it. Well, I thought I'd bring the rain with me Did from you? London. How are you? I'm Alex. <laughs> Laura, nice to meet you. You ready for today? I feel really naughty um, <laughs> and nervous. Meeting in a park. But yeah. What are you going to do? What's going to happen? All right, well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. Today, you're going to play two parts. You're going to help somebody and then you're going to become a victim. Okay. And then after you become a victim, we're going to make a lot of money. Right. All right, come with me and I'll tell you the rest. <laughs> I'll tell you the rest. Come on, let's go. Let's get out of this rain. So to help the hustlers scan that cash, Laura's going to have her work cut out in the honey trap. Today, the hustlers are operating in an upmarket pub just outside a city centre. They park up outside a local hotel and get into position. Hot on the heels of the hustlers are these guys. They're here to buy a second-hand laptop from a stranger. This guy's holding the cash, and that makes him the mark. You all right, guys? How are you doing? You all right? And the stranger in the bar just happens to be Jazz. I know you've come to get the laptop, right? Uh, I dropped it this morning uh, as I was bringing it down, and it's basically given a crack to the screen. Uh, so obviously I don't want to give you that because <laughs> it's broken. So I don't actually think I'm going to be able to get it to you today. I was hoping. So the laptop's not available yet. Shame. What's the mark going to do with the rest of his day and all that money in his pocket? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All oh, right, cheers, guys. The mark leaves the bar and walks straight into a bit of a scene. Oh, I'm sorry, can you just help me, please? Sorry. No, I'm just having such a day. Sorry, can you just help me with that? It's Jess playing the damsel in distress, and she clearly needs a helping hand. 
Here comes someone else to the rescue. Sorry, it's Laura. Are you okay? Posing as a staff member of the adjoining hotel. It's her job to make sure the guys accompany Jess back into the building. Come inside, come on, bring her inside. Come on inside. <laughs> job done. There's um, a quiet room if you go in there. Jess keeps up the waterworks and the boys follow Laura into a quiet function room. The seat over here. So much and everything just <laughs> so falling out my back. Are you okay? No, I'm just having an issue. Sorry, have you got everything? Have you got yeah, everything? Yeah. Do you want a glass of water? Yes, please. So what, else, what else was in my Was it just no, no, these no, two, no. was it? Can you just help me check it as everything in yeah. my bag? Thank you. The Mark has no real reason to hang about, but being a gent, he wants to make sure poor Jess is okay. <laughs> what? You, what happened? I just know I'm really trying to tell you Before he can leave, here come Alex and Paul. And they're about to make this situation a whole lot more complicated. She's in here. <laughs> Susie, you're oh, right. Sorry. Oh, what are you still doing here? Who are these guys? This is my, this is what, my buds. What, what are you two doing here? What are you doing here, Susie? Sorry? These guys obviously mean business. What's your name? Jane, I'm, I'm going to have to go back to work. Have a seat, Jane. Right, just... The Mark is trying to work out what he's got himself into. What's your name? I'm James. Hey, Steve. <laughs> What's wrong? Why are you upset? Alex and Paul are playing Jess's bosses. Sounds like they're not very happy about something. Is that my money in that bag? I was just taking it to the bank. Is that, is that what you wanted? Can I count the money in the bag, please, Susie? Yeah. Why are you trying to hide the money? No, I'm not. I'm not. What? I wasn't. We just basically just met outside and packed up. The Mark doesn't know anything about any money. Guys, I've really got to get back to work. Sorry, just, you could uh, just sit there for a second. Just we'll give us a few up. minutes. What's going on? Alex makes sure Laura stays put as he counts out the money from Jess's bag. Please, what is going on? I haven't got a clue what's going on. Are you Nor here? does he. We are £1,570 short. OK, so can I look through the rest of your bag, please? There's over 1,500 quid missing from the bar's money bag. And Alex suspects Jess's light fingers. I don't understand oh, what's down. going on. We need to Susie, stop I need in the to bag. look at your bag, sweetheart, because if the rest of the money is in here, then something's not right. I'd like it always. It's I not, don't want to take her over there and uh, give her a handkerchief or something, will you? Come with me. Calm down. I, I, never, I don't understand look, why. Calm down. We'll find why out. I don't understand what's happening. What's happening. Right. Alex takes Jess away to find out where the missing money is. I think that they picked everything up on my bag and that everything was in there. Wait a minute. Hold on. So what are you saying? That the, the rest of the money is where? Where's the money? I don't know. You picked everything up. I That's know. news to him. Everything outside. I've not, so they've got it. Anything so they've got your money. Did you pick anything up? Uh, we're one thousand five hundred and seventy pounds short. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I've never they even seen that girl oh, yeah. in my life. Have a seat. I've never seen this girl from my side. I'm just Where do you live? I can tell it. You don't know her at all. I've never seen her in my life. I'm on my break and I've got to get back to work. What's that money there? What's that? It suddenly dawns on the mark that he does have a big wad of cash in his pocket. The £1,500 for the laptop. He decides to come clean. You got money on you? Yeah. yeah. Can I have a word with you outside? Yeah, have a word with my colleague for a second. On that bombshell, Alex takes Laura out of the way, leaving Paul to ramp up the pressure. How much money you got on you? Uh, we basically were meeting a guy for a laptop just there. So you just happen to be here? No, I know it looks like pure ridiculous, but like, I've got the text and I've had to prove it. Like, <laughs> That's a lot of money. I know, I know. You just happen to be... Yeah, that you... it just happens to be, yeah. It all sounds a bit too much of a coincidence. Now, I know you're telling me you don't have it, but we need to get to the bottom of this. Right now, hotel worker Laura is being given a going over by Alex in the hallway. That's 1500 and this guy's got an awful lot of explaining to do about all that cash. That's exactly the amount of money that is missing. It's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? I know it is a hell of a coincidence. He's left wondering what on earth he's got himself into. 
and how he will ever get back out. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> the proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. Polly is out on the town, but tonight she isn't going to buy a single drink. Instead, she's going to make her friends buy them for her. Right, who wants to bet with me? Who wants a little bet, yeah? OK, if you lose, you've got to buy everyone around a drink. If you win, I'll buy everyone one, yeah? OK, so here I have three bottle tops. OK, the bet is I want you to get this one in the middle of these two, OK? And there's like a couple of rules. This one, you can move, touch, do whatever you like with that one. This one, you can't move, that has to stay okay. there. And this one, you can't touch. So do you want to give it a whirl? Sure. Yeah. So, this top needs to go in here. But they can't move this one. And they can't touch that one, eh? So I can move this one? Yep, you can touch, move that one, yep. To get it in between. That's good, but it has to be in between like this. Actually in between. Yeah, them. actually in between, okay. yeah. No. That's quite good, <laughs> but this one moves. Yeah. So that's... But... I give up. You give up? Yeah. So three, I can move and touch this one. This one I can touch but not move, and that one I can't touch. And that goes in the middle! <laughs> so, Polly holds this one, knocks it with that one, and moves the bottle top into the resulting gap. Simple. Sort of. So this time I will have a glass of wine. Brilliant. <laughs> Lovely. It's a soggy weekday morning, and this couple is sheltering from the rain in a cosy calf. The guy's got his mobile phone on the table, and although there isn't a hustler in sight, that makes him the mark in SMS SOS. The mark has just received a text from a mate called Jamie. Jamie has filled up with petrol and left his wallet at home and now he can't leave. Looks like he needs some help. Jamie. Jamie, you can't must me over here, can He tries to ring him. No answer, but another text. I think my phone is broken now. And another. Every time I need Do you that. cash on you? No, only good. They're gonna send someone over to Cathy from a closer branch. I don't have any cash on me though. I think I've got like 12 quid in cash. <laughs> 12 quid on me. So, his mate needs some cash to pay for a petrol bill, but the mark hasn't got enough on him. It's out into the rain to find a cash point and back into the dry as quickly as possible. Yeah. Just in time for someone else's entrance. It's a petrol station attendant, sent to pick up the cash. And he looks a lot like Jazz. To pick up petrol for... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Petrol, oh, perfect. Uh, let me just get a receipt for you. Uh, it's for 50. Yeah. Here you go, mate. 50 quid for his mate's tank of petrol. Perfect. Cheers. Nice one. Thanks, pal. Jazz heads off with the cash, and the mark feels like he's done a good deed. But somehow, this guy having a quiet lunch has really been scammed out of his money. Earlier that morning, a clumsy customer knocked his mobile phone onto the floor. It was Alex, who'd been sitting right behind the mark at the bar. He made sure that the phone smashed right under the couple's table, with pieces flying everywhere. For another piece that might have... Sorry, sorry. A piece of phone... No, I think that's probably the end of that one. <laughs> you won't be making calls on that again. Uh, it's 
sorry, I couldn't ask you for a quick favor. Can I borrow your phone just to let somebody know that I'm, they can't contact me, I can just dial out. It's a, just another mobile, is that all right? Absolutely. Thank you, sorry. So Mark then let Alex use his phone to let a colleague know where to find him. Do you mind if I send him a quick text message? Thank you. <laughs> Unable to reach him, Alex then asked to send a text instead. Yeah, I think I've done it. I've deleted it so you don't have to have any. Oh, no, Thank you. Thanks. Alex then returned the Mark's phone and headed upstairs to wait for his business partner. So what really happened? I couldn't ask you to borrow your phone just to let somebody know that I'm mobile. Is that right? When he got hold of the Mark's phone, he actually called his own perfectly intact phone in his pocket in order to find out the Mark's phone number. Do you mind if I send them a quick text message? Because they uh, might be on the train. Thank you. And instead of texting, he looked up a recent call. In this case, the Mark's mate, Jamie. Then he deleted Jamie's number and replaced it with his own phone number. Yeah, I think I've done it. I've deleted it so you don't have to have any. From this point on, he could sit upstairs texting the Mark from his phone, and it would look as if it was coming from Jamie. And the Mark's fate was sealed. Once Jazz had collected the money, Alex made his exit. And slowly, the light bulb comes on in the Mark's head. Where's Jimmy's number? Jimmy. Just been scammed. The guy that see the guy that picked my phone up, he changed Jamie's number. That's why he wouldn't pick the phone up. It's a guy, he's unlucky, dropped his phone, it's smashed, and he's in a bit of, a, a bit of trouble. He needs to borrow someone's phone. I didn't think anything of it at all. And I saw him dart out of the, uh, the cafe just after, and that was when I thought there might be something a bit suspicious happened. And I got my girlfriend to check her phone number and compare it with the number of my phone, and I noticed it was different. And that was when I thought, oh, something's not right here. You hear about it, but it's not something you ever think will happen to yourself. So I'm quite shocked and angry and upset about it. This is a devious little scam. The Mark believes he's helping other people out. First, Alex with his broken phone, and then his mate who stuck at a petrol station. Never give anyone access to your smartphone. If there is an emergency, dial the number yourself and watch as they use the phone. More importantly, if someone contacts you looking for money or assistance and you can't speak to them directly, there's a good chance someone is hiding behind their identity. We store our lives on our smartphones. They're not just telephones. We very often have banking details. We have personal information on there that's really important. And you need to protect that. And you need to look after that information and keep it close to you. The best advice is never to let a stranger have access to your phone in that way. Dial a number for them by all means, but don't hand over control of your life to a stranger. Earlier today, TV presenter Laura Hamilton helped Jess put this mark in a very sticky situation. I don't understand Calm what's down. going on. Oh, Susie, I need to look at your bag, sweetheart. Jess stands accused of stealing bar takings from bosses Alex and Paul and has pointed the finger at the mark. Where's the money? I don't know, you picked everything up. Though he's totally innocent, he's actually carrying a very incriminating £1,500. That's a lot of money. I know, I know. And he thinks he's in deep, deep trouble in The Honey Trap, part two. Let's have a seat for me, will you? Laura comes back into the room. Uh, Give me a second, will you? This is Paul's cue to leave. Susie, please just stay there. Just Susie. stay there. It's yeah. Laura's big moment. Guys, look, I I don't know what's going on, but whatever they say, just do, because yeah, yeah. I, I'm like... <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we want to kind of mess with them. I'm just like... <laughs> right now, Laura is alone with the Mark and his mate. She's been sent in to convince him that the hustlers mean business. And the Mark isn't arguing. All right, I need to count this. Yeah, I think okay. that's fine with you. All right. 
Um, I'm sorry to... Yeah. No, it's fine, I said... But, you know, yeah. this money yeah. does not belong yeah. to Susie, I mean, it belongs to yeah, our... Yeah. The guys return, and Alex makes a big show of counting the Mark's cash. He's convinced it's the cash that Jess has stolen from them. The Mark can't believe what's happening. That's 1,500 plus the 70 from you, that's 1,570. That's exactly the amount of money that is missing. It's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? I know it is a hell of a coincidence. How are they going to resolve this terrible situation? You know, boys, I've got to call the police no matter what happens here. Yeah, that's but, fine. That is absolutely fine. But, Ollie, look, let me um, have a word with her for me, will you? Do you want to tell me now where the money is? Yeah, I told you that. That's it. I haven't got it in my bag. That, that'll be it there. That's not. I've got it in my bag every look. That'll be But you realise that we're missing a lot of money. Yeah, but I dropped everything. They probably just picked it up. Jess is still claiming that money came from a handbag. The fact you got all this money, I've got to check it. Do you understand? I know that makes sense. Looking more nervous by the second, the Mark has no choice but to agree to allow Paul to check the cash. Just tell me honestly now, you did not get this money from her. 100%. That is my, that is okay. my wages. Like. Laura's protesting her innocence too. Can you take a photograph of this? Yeah. I'm going to take a photograph of some yeah. of these serial numbers. Yeah, Fair enough. Exactly. We've got all the serial numbers back at the office. There is a way to sort this out. Alex is going to check the serial numbers of the Mark's notes against ones they photographed back at the office. As they already suspected Jess of stealing, it was a trap they set for her. Right, keep all the money together just now if you don't mind. All the cash, Jess's, Laura's and the Mark's, goes into the same bag. So what I'll do is, why don't you come with me? You stay with the money. Okay, take about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and sort this out. How does that sound? Right. All right. So the Mark comes to the bar, and Laura watches the cash. In fact, what does, she have? Have, what does she have, 70 pounds? 70, yeah. All right, why don't you come with us? This is your money, you stay with your money. No, change of plan. The Mark had the most cash, so it's only fair he stays with the blue money bag. I didn't we'll do it. I didn't out. take it. They probably got that it on the table. Yeah. As Laura and the other hustlers leave, Paul has a few reassuring words for the Mark. Listen. Yeah. She's done this before. Yeah. She's dropped people right in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And the thing is, there's nobody to back it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've taken a record of everything yeah. she took out. She went nowhere near the bank, okay. and we saw her drop it off. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah. Promise me you'll be here in 10 minutes. Yeah, no, me. Like, All right? All right, we'll be right back. I want your word on it. I'm here, I'm here. Paul makes the mark shake on it. The mark breathes a sigh of relief. Hopefully, this whole mess will be sorted out soon. And after all, he's been left looking after all the cash. The mark waits. <laughs> And waits. And waits. There's no sign of the hustlers returning, and the Mark is starting to tear his hair out. But he's still too scared to touch the money bag. A full hour of waiting later, the Mark has had enough, and he has a look inside the money bag. There's the envelope, but it contains precisely zero pounds sterling. Here's what he didn't see. Earlier today, Jazz scouted the area for the laptop deal. As well as a bar, he wanted a quiet room nearby just like this one. He then stashed a blue money bag on the table. Later on, when Alex counted the Mark's cash, it went into an identical blue bag. Whilst the Mark was stressing out, Alex switched one blue bag for the other. 
concealing the one with the cash inside the newspaper. Why don't you come with me? You stay with the money. Susie, come on, in the car. The hustlers walked out with all the Mark's money. I want your word on it. Leaving him looking after nothing but a load of worthless newspaper. But by this time, the hustlers were long gone, along with his £1,500. Finally, computer salesman Jazz was picked up just around the corner, and the getaway was complete. I was so scared, I was thinking, how is anyone going to believe me about this money? I was like terrified, I was like, I'm just going to cooperate fully with these guys, and I didn't want to leave because I thought, I'm not having these people after me and stuff like that, but I think you need to be careful and check your money and stuff like that as well. Like. When the cash was being counted on the table, um, I kept looking over at the guys, and I could see they were really scared. I mean, my, my heart was really racing, um, and I was pretty scared too. I just felt like I was totally in the situation and really, really felt for them. I mean, I really think they thought if they don't give the money over, something was gonna happen to them. I think people that actually do this for work in the real world quite clearly have no morals. I mean, the, the boys were genuinely feeling for Jess. They wanted to help her, comfort her, pick her bits and pieces up. And yet, you know, when you, someone's good natured and you, and you play on that, it's a pretty nasty thing to do. Please don't let this scam put you off helping someone in distress. There's nothing wrong with doing a good deed, but when you're suddenly faced with a demand for cash, then you should know that all is not as it seems. If anyone tries to pressure you into handing over your money, you have the right to walk away or call the police for assistance. Consider that the entire situation may have been orchestrated just to separate you from your cash. The best advice here is to call the police. You can't know what's going on in this argument. You can't get beneath the surface. Let the professionals deal with it. Today's guest hustler is star of Shameless and EastEnders, Jodie Latham. I'd like to think that I've got what it takes to be a good hustler. So, we'll see. People who hustle for a living, real hustlers, it must be crazy, I mean, so nerve-wracking. Every day, not knowing what's going to happen. It's a um, scary life. I feel like the new member of Ocean's 12. <laughs> it's great. Ah! Jody has been sent to some disused wasteland to meet a man about a scam. Welcome to The Real Hustle. What do you think? Scary. It's quite scary. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of questions for you, quite important. Okay. First one is, do you play poker? A little. Well, now you play a lot. Okay. The other question is, how do you think we can take somebody for a lot of money by letting them win a lot more? <laughs> I have no idea. We're going to let someone win thousands. Are we? But you're the secret. Okay. All right. We're going to teach you everything you need to know. Sounds good. Come on, I'll Excellent. give you a few lessons on poker. You usually have to start off by playing for as much money as you have. Right. And I'll be willing to take that from you. All right. This is the Mad Greek. It's weekday lunchtime in this bar. I think these are the two guys. These guys are both regular poker players. But this guy in particular is carrying lots of cash, making him the mark. Good, good to good. meet you. How are you? Yes, well. Have a seat. Thanks, Stuart. Stuart. Nice to, nice to meet you. Have a seat, Stuart. Okay. Lee, how are you doing? You all right? Oh. Jody's first role is to put the mark at ease and draw him into the scam. I told you about the game tonight and everything. I mean, you boys are up for that, I'm assuming. Just... Oh, yeah. yeah. Nick is coming over um, just, to, just to say hello and meet you guys. Nick is the guy that runs the game. He is a bit mental. He kind of bets on anything. He'll bet on two flies landing on a sugar cube. I'm serious. He's that guy. But he throws it around, can afford it. It's a fun night if you're up for it. Yeah, good. And here's the man himself, poker organiser Nick the Mad Greek in a flashy new Merc. Yeah, that's a new car. Yeah. He got a new car three months ago. He's not this guy. You met him once. Briefly. I'll bet you he doesn't remember you. Do you reckon? Right, I'll bet he doesn't remember you. A pound. 
It's actually Alex in his Saturday Night Fever disco suit. He's a gambler who likes expensive cars and even more expensive women. You had nothing to do with Nick. Nick. This is Jim. James. We met before, yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. See, well, you okay? I nearly lost a pound, yeah. <laughs> this is Susie, everybody. That will be Jess, playing Nick the Greek's very long-suffering girlfriend. I said there were spaces tonight you wanted to do the game tonight. Fine. You bring money, you can play. <laughs> yeah? As you told you, we, we bet on anything. Yeah. I bet on something. He bets on anything. I bet on anything because yeah. I'm Greek. Yeah. You know? we, bet, we bet on things. <laughs> I tell you what, the guy, the guy there on the phone, the hoodie, yeah. OK, the bet is which way he goes when he finishes his phone call. The poker's not for hours, but Alex is already gambling. He wants to bet on which way a stranger will walk down the road. Everything you have in your pocket? Anything I've got in my pocket. Anything. All right. There's a what? couple hundred there. All right. How much you got? I'll, I've got you covered. You? No, no, I'll cover you. Bralto, bralto, bralto. Bralto. Bralto, you left out of any more taxi. I'm not going to lose it. Take it off, fella. No. What? Come on. You know I'm good for my work. Me... Come on, Ella, take it off. This is from her parents or something. The Greek shows he's completely barking by using Jess's priceless family heirloom to cover his 500 pound bet. Right, okay, that's right, we're it. covered. All right, we're covered, we shake. All right. What are you looking for? Is it real? What, you want a bike and a fake necklace? I know that thing around your neck is fake. Come on. Uh, all right. He has to go that way. That way, that way. So, if the guy in the hoodie goes left, then Paul wins the bet. If he goes right, Alex makes 500 pounds. Are you sure you don't want any action? No, 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 no. The mark's staying out of this bet. Just as well, as that random stranger is really jazz. He's actually on the phone to Jess, listening into the conversation in the pub and waiting for his moment to walk away. Whoa, 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 hold on, uh, hold uh, on, okay. here he goes. Turn, you <laughs> turn. Uh, wait, uh, wait, 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 oh, which oh. way? Oh, oh mamma mia! Oh, mamma mia! A good bet. <laughs> the whole scene was staged to convince the mark Alex is 24 karat crazy. Listen, Are you tonight though, you? tonight we're going to play pockets. Okay. This is the game I love. Right. It's my favorite because it's a pure gambling game. Uh, so I see you tonight. Okay, nice uh, take, uh... Before Alex heads off, he reminds Paul that he wants to play pockets later on. It's another crazy gambling game, and it's clearly his favourite. You will lose more money to me tonight. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Hi there. Yamas, salvo my rota. Pockets, which is the stupidest game in the world, right? I've told him that he has a tell, right? And that if he puts something in his left pocket or his right pocket, I always know where it is. A tell is a gambler's unwitting giveaway sign. He can't figure out what his tell is. His tell is, is that Somebody just tells me which pockets, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the tell. Paul must now persuade the mark to play a little trick on Alex. He wants him to cheat when they're playing their game of pockets later on. And all it is, is if he puts it in his right pocket, you put any hand in any pocket, right? If there's no hand in the pocket, nothing. All I need is if one of you wouldn't mind just letting me know which pocket he put something in. So, I'll reach for the mobile phone when it's in the right. That's <laughs> Sounds like he's up for a spot of light cheating by signalling to Paul which pocket Alex is hiding an object in later tonight. Can you do that as well? You can do that. I mean, oh, oh, oh. Jody also agrees to make the mark feel like it's no big deal. They say their goodbyes and agree to meet up later at the card club for an evening of wild gambling. Take care, guys. Still to come. The Mark plays a game of poker he'll never forget. If you beat me, I give you the card. And pockets the biggest win of his life. Come on. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> The proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins.
question is, how many drops of water from this glass using this straw do you think oh. I can get on the penny before it all spills over? Six. Okay. Six drops yeah. before it spills over. So if I say, um, if I get more than six, then you buy us a round of drinks. So three drinks. That one, drink. that <laughs> one like sounds it. nice, doesn't like it? it? If I get six or below, I'll buy you all the drinks. Okay. Sound good, yeah? yeah we'll okay, do. check on it. So, the bet is, if Jess can't fit six or more drops onto the 1p piece, she has to buy a round of drinks. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you owe us drink. Yeah. Let's carry on. Seven, Seven. eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24! <laughs> Turns out you can fit a lot of drops on a 1p piece. So I think you're a solid dream. Yeah, I do. I love a gin and tonic, please. It's a rainy day in Edinburgh. But the weather isn't putting these people off from sitting outside this city centre cafe. Yeah. Here come a couple of all-weather hustlers. Sorry, hi. Sorry. It's Alex and Polly, who take a seat next to a friendly-looking chap at the next table. He's now the Mark. Yeah, we'll, we'll just move it a little bit. Lot. Yeah. There we go. Thank, Thank you. Like Sorry, I got 70 pounds. Otherwise, you'll beat me off my table. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you can pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the ice well and truly broken. One thing's for sure the hustlers won't be buying anyone's lunch in beggar's belief. I feel really embarrassed, you know, asking to borrow some money and stuff. No, but... Listen, it's okay. It's not a problem. I can lend you the money. I've brought 500. Is yeah, that okay? that's fine. Yeah, that's perfect. Sounds like Polly's short of money and Alex is helping her out. They're trying hard to draw the Mark's attention to the envelope and the cash. Hundreds. But he's so engrossed in conversation with his mate that he doesn't even notice. Five hundreds. And do you know what? I'm going to give you my new number and put it on the envelope so if there's any problems... Yeah. Have you got a pen? Pen. That's not going to work for this scam. Polly makes sure she gets the Mark's attention. Excuse me, sorry to interrupt. You don't have a pen I could borrow, do you? I do. Okay. Oh, actually, no, no, I've got one. Got sorry. Boom. He's clocked the big wad of cash. I'm going to put it in here. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Alex makes a big deal of writing his mobile number on the envelope, talking loud enough to ensure the Mark overhears. Yeah. Don't lose that. It's 500 quid in there. I'm not going to lose that money. Being a strong believer in not littering, Holly takes a moment to throw away the coffee cup. And the hustlers are gone, leaving the Mark to enjoy his lunch. A few minutes later, someone else arrives at the cafe. He looks and smells like he hasn't had a shower for weeks. Seems like he's found something. The Mark notices the tramp is holding a brown envelope, but this is no ordinary down and out. It's Paul, moving in for phase two of this scam. Is this yours? I think a lady put it in there. Sorry, what? A lady put it in there. A lady put it in there with money in it? Find his papers. Is that a number? This isn't what Paul wants to hear. It's still not right, is it, though, is it? Can you call that? No, I don't want him to do it. You sure? He's going to have to work a little harder on the mark. Just, uh, you know, I don't want to get into trouble. Do you want to call that? After a bit more persuasion, he gets him to call the number on the envelope, knowing full well it belongs to Alex. <clears throat> Hello there, hi. Um, just give me a call. There's uh, an envelope um, outside a place called Victor Hugo's. We've got a telephone number at the time. Oh, no. That's... Uh, uh, have you got it? Uh, we've got it here. Another gentleman's got it. Oh. Uh, has he opened it? No. OK. Uh, He's a very honest man. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, good. Um, Ugh, there's a 500 pounds in there for, for rent money for my colleague who's with me. I'm going to send her back, but she's not going to be able to get back there for another 20 minutes. Maybe if you could give him like 20 pounds, and when the lady comes, she can open the envelope and give it back to you. OK, that's fine. That, would, that would be fantastic. He said he wants me to give you a reward of 20 quid, and she's going to give me that back out of that. Is there money in there? Yeah, Can we say 40 quid? I mean, I don't know how much is in there, but... It's reasonable. He's pushing his yeah. luck. Just keeps me out of the rain I, for I two think, nights, you know I what I mean? Oh, thank you. And there's 40 quid. Can't say 50. Why not? Oh, thank you. 50's even better. Thank you. You are a very honest man. God bless you. Oh, you are. Thank you very much. Okay? Thank you. You are too. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So that's a good deed all round, and everyone's happy. Pleased with his good work, the Mark calls the number on the envelope again to let Alex know he gave the tramp 50 quid. But the phone just rings out. Well, you're my your witness. Yeah, yeah. Looks like he'll just have to sit tight until the nice lady arrives to collect her envelope. So he waits and waits. 20 minutes later, and there's still no sign of her. Eventually, curiosity gets the better of him, and he sneaks a peek. Instead of 500 quid in cash, the envelope is stuffed with shreds of newspaper. So what happened to all that cash? Here's what really happened. Earlier, when Polly dropped her coffee cup into the bin, she made sure the mark saw her. When Paul appeared posing as a tramp, he dropped a brown envelope behind the bin identical to the one Alex gave to Polly, making it look as if he'd just found it. But this one didn't have any cash in it, just ripped up pieces of paper. Playing the honesty card, Paul encouraged the mark to call the number on the envelope. Has he opened it? Paul knew Alex would pick up straight away. After all, he and Polly were parked just around the corner waiting for the phone to ring. There's a 500 pounds in there for, for rent money. Thinking the sealed envelope was full of cash, the Mark had no problem giving the tramp a finder's fee out of his own pocket. Maybe if you could give him like 20 pounds and when the lady comes, she can open the envelope and give it back to you. If... He said he wants me to give you a reward of 20 quid. Can, can say 50. Being the hustler he is, Paul even negotiated the money up to 50 quid. Plus, a compliment for such outstanding honesty. Once he had the cash, the tramp walked around the corner to the van where Alex and Polly were waiting. What did you roll the window for? Because I, I, think. Think, I don't think oh. I could. I feel sad. I've been humbled, probably, and uh, we just have to get on with life. Never hand over money for something that appears to be of greater value unless you know who you're dealing with. An envelope full of newspaper isn't going to be worth very much when you take it down to the bank. Earlier today, Shameless star Jodie Latham helped the hustlers convince this mark to get involved in a poker game being run by Nick the Mad Greek a wealthy high roller known for his wild gambling habit. Full house! A game called Pockets is also on the cards, and the Mark has agreed to help Paul win in... It's the biggest bet you've ever made in your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Mad Greek, part two. The Mark arrives at the casino for tonight's poker game. The Mad Greek's Mercedes AMG is parked right outside, so it's game on. And we have um, 500 pounds. Everybody buy in. We can settle up at the end, no problem. I trust you guys. Okay. The cards start flying as the hustlers set about gaining the Mark's confidence. Give me my full house, baby! Oh, uh, yes! Full house! Alex starts out winning. I'm drinking, yeah. 
But as the game goes on, Alex's plays get more and more reckless. I don't like my, my kicker. Have it. Take it. The Greek starts losing his chips left, right, and centre. All All right, cold. And before long, Alex is almost broke. Ah, you ah. have me. You have me. Paul puts him out of his misery. Wait, 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 wait. I cut you for everything. But Alex isn't done playing. If you beat me, I give you the card. Having run out of money, Alex is now playing with the key to his £30,000 Mercedes. The mark looks on in awe. You don't have to give me the chip back. I can buy it. The bet's off to everyone's relief. OK, take a break. Take a break. Do you want to come, come downstairs, boys? So the Greek is out. He spent enough on poker, but he hasn't run out of cash yet. He's saving some for his favourite game, game, pockets. I'm ready. I'm ready. Paul turns his back while Alex puts his car key into one of his jacket pockets, right or left. All Paul has to do is guess which pocket the key is in. Simple. Left. Why, how you do this now? You have never done it right, how many, five times in a row? Every time, you gotta tell. I have a tell. You have a tell, these guys already know what it is. No way. Yep. Do you know what his tell is? Oh, okay. See? His tell is, is that somebody just told me which pocket is. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the tell. I do with you. I do with you. A thousand pounds, I do with you. A thousand pounds. I'll do it for a thousand. You know, I'm going to the toilet, I'll do it for a thousand pounds with him. With the help of Jody and the Mark, Paul can't lose. Alex refuses to play him anymore. He now wants to play the Mark. If you lose, I'll give you the money. Christmas came early, right? The Mark finally agrees to play Alex at pockets. Paul's guaranteeing the bet, so he's got nothing to lose. Remember, right in the pocket, left out the pocket. So if he puts it in his right pocket, you put any hand in any pocket. If there's no hand in the pocket, nothing. Are you ready? He's Don't gonna be do scared. it. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Look away. Yes, look yeah, away. You can look. It's now down to Jody. He has to signal to the mark which pocket Alex has put the key in. If this goes wrong, the scam is off. The key's in Alex's right pocket. Jody's signal is to put his hands in his pocket. This is for a grand. Left or right? It's in your right pocket. In my right pocket? <laughs> the mark gets it correct. He's just won a thousand pounds. Double or nothing? No. Double or nothing? No. Come on. Crazy. Double or nothing? Not to lose. No, double or nothing. If you get it wrong, you don't get it. Come on, play. Okay, turn it right. away. Alex puts the object in his right pocket again, so Jody once again puts his hands in his pockets for the signal. You can turn around. <laughs> for 2,000, eh? Left or right? They're now playing for two grand. <laughs> Be honest. Oh, my days. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take any more of this. No, 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 double or nothing. Double more. or nothing. Double or more. nothing for. Look away. The mad Greek just won't accept defeat. So, it's double or nothing again. You right? No. <laughs> this time, it's left, so Jody's hands are out of his pockets. This is 4,000, I owe him. Yeah? Four grand is on the line here. In your left pocket. The mark's now £4,000 up on the game. Double or nothing, one more time. One more time. Paul advises the mark to take the massive eight grand bet. He knows he can't lose, but he's still nervous. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. The hands are out of the pockets and the signals are in place. It's in your left pocket. This is not my night. Eh? 
thousand pounds, won in just a few seconds. Last one, because I, 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 a chance to get my money. Last one. You have 16,000 with you though. I have the car, 30,000 pounds. That's a brand new Mercedes AMG worth more than 30 grand. Alex is now using the car as collateral. You ready? I'm ready. Hands in, and that means the right pocket. It's the biggest bet you've ever made in your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's in your right pocket. Oh my God. 16 grand. That's way more than the mark has ever won. Enough. Enough. No more. Yeah, finally, enough. <laughs> Nick the Greek said enough. <laughs> I can get it to you Monday. Uh, tonight, you're good for 16,000. On Monday, you tend to forget a little. Just, you know. Listen, you want something? You can take the car. 30,000 pounds. You can have the car, you give me 16,000 the square. But you don't have 16,000 on you either. So Alex is happy to use the car as collateral but it's worth far more than the £16,000 he owes the mark. Go, have a look at the car. But this is worth 30000 OK, we're clear. Let me speak to him. So, so let me speak to him. All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's take have a look. Have a look at the car. They go outside to calm down and have a good look at the car. Oh, my days. You can't have it, though, surely. He's not just going to give you his car. Alex won't release the car for the 16 grand owed. Maybe there's a compromise. You owe him 16. I owe him 16, which I have to, I'm going to pay. Gives you 6,000. That makes up to 22. 22,000 is a good price for that car. In your, in your game, that's a good price for that car. So Paul's suggesting giving Alex a few grand to make up the cost of the car, and the mark can then keep it. OK, indeed. The mark will pay just six grand for a £30,000 car. Where's the cash? Uh, uh, yeah, give him the cash. So... There go an awful lot of £50 notes. Deal? You got yourself a car? You're happy? Um, it's not sunken. <laughs> okay. What do you want to drink, Stuart? Um, Miller. Get him a Miller. He's only going to have one beer, though. After all, he's got a brand new car to drive home. Go upstairs, sit down, I'll get Jackie. The Mark heads upstairs while the hustlers go to the bar to buy the drinks. There's no sign of the hustlers or those beers. What's the hold up? Eventually, the Mark gets suspicious and goes back downstairs to find his new friends. There's no sign of them at the bar, so he heads outside. But they're not out here. And there's no Mercedes either. Go upstairs, sit down, I'll get Jackie. The hustlers weren't getting the drinks in after all. And Alex wasn't handing over the real key to that sports car. How else could he return it to the rental company that hired it out to them for the day? Watching it all fit into place, you're thinking, wow, wow, wow. And you're getting more and more excited and more and more sort of keen to do it, to have someone off. <laughs> The reality of it is, it just it, it confirmed what I already knew, and that is it's very easy to get hustled. We all love a bargain, but a casino is the wrong place to start thinking about buying a motor car. Make sure the person that's offering you something really has got the right to sell it. Be challenging about it. A car key on its own is worth nothing. <laughs>